Welcome to Theme Park Map Monday, episode 42. Uh, this week we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to do two parks, uh, two British parks from 2019. And this is following the annual pass um, open weekend. So a bit of a preview for both parks. So these are brand new maps. Um, the only people who visited the parks this weekend went. Um, not a great deal of changes, but uh, what we do is we do it in the order that we actually went in. Uh, Saturday was the opening day of Chesington for the 2019 season and the opening of the room on the broom, A Magical Journey. This is kind of like another Julia Donaldson ride, uh, attraction, sorry. But following the success of the Gruffalo ride, the river ride adventure that opened a couple of years ago, um, and now this has taken the place of po Hocus Pocus Hall, which is in the old Burnt Stub Mansion right in the centre of Chesington. Um, so we just opened the map out. I don't know if people are familiar with Chesington World Adventures. It's part of the Merlin group. It's one of their their parks. Uh, obviously Merlin own most of the parks in the UK now. So we've got their normal sort of niceties, the VIP experiences, wild experience to remember, draft feeding, face to face with gorillas, uh, training the zookeeper with some sort of animals that are a little bit more friendly than zookeeper uh, than zookeepers than. Uh, lions and tigers and stuff so annual passes always trying to get you up to upgrade annual pass it's good to do i mean you pretty much you get two days in any of the merlin parts and uh, the annual pass is pretty much paid for themselves and they're adding they're slowly getting there hopefully we'll see all year round opening in british bean parks but at the moment you know we've got quite a big uh season open this and all the green there is all when it's open for that Halloween, the Halloween event going on in the purple there, and then reds for the winter's tale, a very nice Christmas event that they have as well. Share the adventure all in all and all social media things, um, which is like everyone, it's advertising, a bit like this is for them, I suppose. You know, you're all looking at this, this is all good advertising. So, uh, two hotels at Chesington, the Azteca Hotel and the Safari Hotel. I've been there for a couple of years now. I don't think they need any more hotels. Um, hopefully they can add more, you know, they get infrastructures there. So hopefully you sort of build up on it and improve the parks. Um, Merlin have got a habit of like revamping rides. So they change things like was this Hocus Pocus Hall into the room on a broom. So um, hopefully they'll add a few more new things. You know, they've uh, changed only last year, Tiger Rock which was uh, is now a tiger thing. They do it well, but we just need some new stuff. Even the whole of this sort of Africa area here, or wild Asia, used to be a Dennis the Menace of Bino land area. So, um, you know, as sort of theme park enthusiasts, ride enthusiasts, we just like complete changes and new additives. And we do enjoy going on some world favourites. So, not a lot changed for this year, uh, apart from the, the actual room on the broom. It's just a nice little walkthrough. I uh, did have a bit of a rant because we we're in a queue for two and a half hours. Um, we were told 50 minutes. So uh, I got a bit vocal on Twitter and someone did say that uh, anyone moaning about these queues on new rides was an arse. Thanks for that. But put it in this way, if you were told your meal was going to be ready in 50 minutes in a restaurant and you were waiting two and a half hours, you'd probably eat the waiter. So don't call people arse. It's not nice. Anyway, so... After going on it, uh, it was okay. It wasn't the best thing. It's definitely improvement on Hocus Pocus Hall. It's nice and innovative. And if you're a friend and a big fan of Julia Donaldson and her stuff, take a wander through. It's quite nice. But don't queue two and a half hours. I wouldn't have said it's worth it for that. It takes up a big chunk of your day. So after doing this, then we can carry on. Go through to this area. Uh, probably most people's favourite here. In this sort of land of wild woods, which has got the very famous vampire hanging roller coaster. And as we said before, the Gruffalo River Rapids. Onto the land of the dragons, which has got one of them, in my mind, one of the best spinning coasters in the country. Um, and a lot of kids sort of stuff in there as well. Some nice things, a nicely themed sort of area. Actually, it used to cover the area where there was a um, action man sort of activity thing. A little bit like a little assault course. That was always okay. And then we into Wild Asia, as we said earlier. It's got a nice one of these spinny rides that just goes up and down like a coaster spinning. That's always good. Always a long queue for that, but we'll go going on. Got some bumper cars things, another sort of theme on the traditional 
Chero Plains, as they used to be known as. Over to Tiger Rock, where we got the log ride. Wasn't actually working at the weekend, but uh, it's good fun and it is nice. It's great to look at the tigers. They seem to have plenty of room there. Uh, a lot of people aren't fans of tigers in captivity, but uh, they do seem to have plenty of space and pretty well looked after. So hopefully they're happy. Uh, through to the Forbidden Kingdom. Uh, in there you've got a few rides, again a ride that's had a couple of revamps, it was once the fifth dimension, it's now a sort of typical shoot em up game as you're going around, good fun, you know, I generally get beaten. Ramesses Revenge, one of the top spin type rides with water jets, hit and miss wherever this ride's running when we go to Legoland. Down to the uh, Rattlesnake here and the Scorpion Express. Again, Scorpion Express is kind of, a, again, it was a reborn the Scorpion Express from a runaway train. Out into the little safari uh, area. Nice, nice view. Lots of room again for the animals and good to see the Zufari. It's a very small version of the sort of big Disney ride that, that's down at Animal Kingdom. Very small version, but it's it's nice for the space they got. But yeah, worth a visit. And let's see. Uh, we'll go next go. We go on to the uh, Legoland Resort, which actually opened on the Sunday. Uh, Nothing majorly new. I mean, they did struggle on the opening weekend because uh, there's high winds, so a lot of the roller coasters and things, but the staff coped particularly well. Didn't have to rant about anything, just uh, praised. You know. Legoland was said to be like mini land, particularly getting a bit tired, but uh, over the close season, they've certainly done a lot of revamping. A new sort of entrance, a lot tidier, cleaner, brighter. And uh, Mini Land, which is kind of like the focal point of any Lego Land, has been tidied up and it looks a lot more colourful and enticing now. So we'll get to the nitty gritty, open up the um, again with the maps, always advertising what's coming ahead, always pushing the annual pass, uh, going for their brick or treat and selecting dates in October and November, and all your smart tips of how to have a better day. Nice pictures again of. Uh, What's going to be coming along? Again, uh, mini figures, they sort of grab the attention, so always nice to put on your little map there. New for 2019, the Lego Movie Experience. Go behind the scenes and see the sets from the movie. That's uh, a bit of a preview of that this weekend as well. It's great, especially if you're a fan of the movie, your characters to meet and greet, and some of the actual film sets, like, uh, which is really good to see. Uh, the Haunted House Monster Party. It's going to be a bit of a shameless plug, you know. If you go to our other videos, you can see it on, on, like, uh, on, on the videos. You will see the haunted house as it is in its current stage. It's gone from multiple angles, so you can see how the, the construction's going on and a little bit of insight into what's inside from some of the stuff that we found on uh, social media. Um, there is also the walkthrough in the room on the broom um, attraction. So there's different videos. There's complete vlogs of the whole days we tend to do vlogging a different way to other people we do it from our perspective or what you would view as your perspective so we're not talking over anything we're just showing it as it is some people like it some people don't um hope you enjoy it but uh, that's a bit of a shameless plug anyway the last thing that's coming is um uh, new for lego city 4d officer in pursuit which is on the 4d movie theater they've done a nice new sort of um signage for this one so it uh, looks a lot more like a pucker movie studio and it's very bright airy inside and it's got a choice of about three films at the moment so whether they're adding this to the roster so it could be four films um we we'll have to wait and see as it comes off so legoland the complete map it's obviously uh it's a huge park it used to be a safari park many many years ago a very famed famous um, Windsor Safari Park but they struggled they tried to turn it into like an African theme park but compared to your sort of um, Disney type things now it just wasn't going to work they just didn't have the money or the investment split up into a load of lands so you've got the beginning Imagination Jubilo Valley Lego City Adventureland Heart Lake City Kingdom of the Pharaohs Pirate Shores Knights Kingdom Lego Ninjago World Land of the Vikings primarily, primarily uh, uh, it's kind of built for under 12 year olds for children but more and more adults are actually getting into lego uh so it's appealing to more adults going as well you'd be surprised how many adults you see walking around and it's good you know some bits are purely for the kids some bits are just for all the family enjoy 
Uh, there's not any thrill rides as such. There's a dragon coaster, but uh, you know, there's just good fun rides and and the imagination and the uh, the connection to Lego products is kind of you know what makes Lego parks so successful. Uh, it's kind of like a joint venture. Lego used to wholly own it, and then Merlin took it and managed it. Now Merlin sort of uh, run it but under license from Lego. So hopefully they maintain that uh, working commitment together and it will all work out well. So I so said, go through to the entrance, a couple of ways down, see there by the beginning, we got the red lid there, that's where the uh, Lego movie experience is. It's pretty good, we like it, so uh, well worth a visit. It's only going to be there for a few weeks, but definitely worth getting yourself down there. Um, you go down this way, you go past uh, what we call the uh, Land of the Vikings, um, rapid rides, mm, I don't know, so I love them or hate them, but uh, they're not always suitable, they're great for a cool down, um, this one's got some nice theming, some lovely Lego models, but it's not probably not the best ride, and not the best version, especially when you compare it to something like Infinity Falls at SeaWorld, so we go down to Lego Ninjago World, only sort of opened a couple of years ago, that's quite an innovative ride, it's good fun, it's a little shoot mark where you don't use, you use your hand, so you become a ninja for a little while. Um, very popular still, because it's pretty new, but well worth a visit. We go through to the Knight's Kingdom, with all the castles and everything. Pirate Shores, where you've got traditional log ride, one of the few that seems to be remaining in the UK. We go to the Kingdom of the Pharaohs. There used to be actually a brick and Elite circus big stop there, but they changed it all into this Kingdom of the Pharaohs, this sort of Egyptian area, which is just full of the um, ancient Egyptian artifacts, rides, and anything to do with it. Giant mummy that will periodically speak to people. Then we go through to Heart Lake City, the home of Lego Friends. Hugely popular with girls, I mean, hugely popular. Again, if you like Lego Friends, we've got loads of videos of Lego Friends on our uh, YouTube channel. So check them out, there's all the dances. It's also home to one of the most popular theme park um, shows going, which is a pirate show. Um, and it's really actually good, you know, for adults or kids, you know, you can just be impressed. There's a lots of high diving. Um, unfortunately, they had to cancel one of the tricks that they used to do because there's a bit of an injury. Um, so it's not quite as exciting as it was, but, you know, safety is uh, paramount for all actors. And then as we go around the lake, you've got the hotels there, the Lego, just a standard Lego hotel, which is lovely. And the Castle Hotel which is really well themed, quite expensive, but really worth staying in, especially if you've got young kids and it's just for a treat for a weekend or something. Uh, birthday treat, you know, they're going to have the best time. Uh, Adventureland. So in here we've got the Atlantis, which is actually a submarine ride, um, which is, again, is quite unique. It's great, you get your little subs, you go around, you see real fish, Lego fish, visit Atlantis, do a bit of uh, onboard gaming. It's all good fun. And right now here, is uh, what's coming, the Haunted House Monster Party. And it's huge, you know, seeing it, we saw the facade, which is brilliant, but there's a massive great building on the back of it. So it's obviously gonna be either an immense ride or we're gonna have some really good theming as you're going around. But definitely be well worth the visit when that opens in April. So as we carry on going around, uh, go down to little boats, you can learn to drive a boat learn to drive a car, you've got to be again quite young to do that, then no for adults, although I think it was for adults, it would be very, very popular. Fruit of Duplo Land, uh, apart from like a big water park there, really packed in the summer, not so packed on a weekend in March, not even open on a weekend in March, but uh, that's all getting good fun for the kids. Get them worn out, get them soaked, take them home, put them in bed, good night's sleep, excellent. And then we go back around uh, to the focal point, Mini Land, I said it's been uh, done up a lot this year. It was looking a bit tired, so it's a lot brighter. Um, as you got all this, lots of different countries. Last year they added America as well, New Land USA. So that's coming a long way as well. And then into Imagination, there's various different workshops here. The 4D cinema, like we were saying about earlier. And then just back on, and you go back up. You can choose to go back up walking if you're tired at the end of the day. Grab the uh, hill train. Back to the beginning, back to where you got the uh, biggest store, one of the largest Lego stores in the world. 
uh, and spend all your hard-earned money. Again, if you've got an annual pass, you get a bit of discount in the store, which is always good. And it's nice to have a bit of a souvenir to take home. So that's it of our tour of the two parks from the annual pass weekend. Hope you enjoyed watching. Hope you watch some of our videos. And I hope you join us again next week. Thanks for watching. You have a good night.